Hello, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little, here with Just GTO, Justin Saliba, recent World Series Boker bracelet winner. How'd that feel? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're going to be reviewing a hand that he played in the $10,000 buy-in Poker Masters tournament. They had a few of those here recently in Las Vegas. And this is a spot that I think a lot of people mess up. So, set up this scenario for us. So, we're stone bubble. I think it was 13 left, probably, um, of one of the 10Ks. I am the shortest stack, or very close to the shortest stack, but there are four total stacks of the 13 with sub-10 big blinds. Um, Shenler was on my right. He was very short. Kerry Katz was uh, two to my left, three to my left. He was also very short, and then one at the other table. So it was a very, um, a very tough stone bubble spot where we had to be really, really tight, uh, putting in our, like being all in in that spot. Well, so in this scenario, I think a lot of people think, oh, I have eight big blinds. Everybody had about eight big blinds. They think, I need to gamble. Got to try to get some chips. But you're highly incentivized to just collect a min cash, which means you have to play really tight in these spots, right? Yeah, yeah. I've messed up. I've I've messed <laughs> up enough bubble spots to uh, <laughs> to realize how how tight you have to be uh, when the pay I jump is the most it will ever be for, for the rest of the tournament, you know? You right. get zero if you bust, and then you make something if, if not, so. And it's not just something, <laughs> it's, it's zero or like a buy-in and a half, or two yeah. buy-ins. Yeah. And some of these small field tournaments, they give like two buy-ins when you get in the money, whereas I realize a lot of games nowadays are like one and a half, but anyway, yeah. in this hand, folds around to Daniel Negreanu, in, on the button, he's a big sack, yeah. or at least a bigger sack than our eight big blind sack. In this scenario, if it folds to you on the button, small blind and big blind both have eight big blinds on the stone bubble. What would you do in that scenario? You need to be all in infinite. With like <laughs> any two cards, right? Probably literally any two cards. So I think you want to min raise like, you want to min raise like the very top of your range, so maybe like nines plus, ace queen plus, something like that. And then you're total garbage. So like two seven zero, maybe just min raise. Okay. And 10 2 0, maybe just min raise. And then jam literally everything else you're playing every hand here because small blind and big blind both must be very tight and and they will be right um so this is a spot where instead of shoving the who makes it two and a half big blinds do you think he's very polarized here or do you think he's just doing this with everything or most hands i wasn't sure at this point okay. um i mean negroni plays well so i think that for the most part he's pretty polarized but he might have a, a few too many uh, like like middling hands. Okay. So, small blind folds. Now it's on you. We are heads up against Daniel Negreanu, but we have pocket aces, so it's okay. Yeah, pretty good hand. Yeah. So, what are you thinking about in this scenario, given their payout implications? So, with the payout implications, I think that you actually do have fold equity in the spot. Because someone's range can be so polar here, and he can just have 7-2 offsuit, if I go all in for 8 big blinds, he's going to fold. You know, like he, he knows how tight I have to be in this spot. Um, so I think in game I was just like trying to like breathe, take my time, like, and, and then put in the call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew I was going to trap the whole time. And so um, you just want to make it look like you don't want to make it look like anything, but you don't want to just like put the call in quickly and, and you know, be an idiot. You don't want to say call. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what a lot of people do in this scenario is they just go all in. But it's probably not ideal because we have the super knots. Yeah. We know we're not folding on any board. And we know Negreanu's hand, whatever it is, is in bad shape because we have the aces, right? Um, you're going to find often when you are shallow stacked, you do want to be trapping specifically aces, right? Yeah. If you look at our GTO charts, when there are no payout implications, you also want to be trapping. I would wonder if on the stone bubble, do you actually want to trap? Because you're going to lose here 20% of the time or something. Yeah. Is it worth that risk in your mind to try to get a full double up? Because you're often going to get a full double up when you call, right? You're going to call, you're going to check the flop, he's going to bet, you're not folding. So you know you're going to get a double up. Is it worth the risk on the stone bubble? My, my guess is like there's some threshold of how deep we are. So like when you have like 15 big blinds here, I don't think we can trap. Because like you're going to actually have an SPR such that it goes check check enough, he gets to realize enough equity, and, and it's not worth it at that point because we're such a lock to make the money. But when you're the shortest stack here and you have sub eight big blinds, that's a spot I think we have to trap with aces. Um, but in, like if we had just just in terms of chips here, I think we could trap with like tens. Mm -hmm. But on the stone bubble, you don't want to trap with tens, right? Because you you don't mind if he folds jack four offsuit or something like that. 
because we don't want him to realize any equity when we have a hand as vulnerable as tens uh, on the stone bubble. But but I do think we we still want to trap aces in this spot. Okay, it's just so good. So you call flop comes, king ten seven. We lose to the king seven now. Yeah. You check, and in this scenario, he bets all in, which is roughly the size of the pot. We don't know what he has. I don't know what he has. In this scenario, do you think he should be going all in with most of his range, or should he be doing something different, like betting a big blind and a half? I realize this board's pretty coordinated, so you probably want to bet bigger on this board in general, but at the same time, you have to be really tight getting it in, right? So imagine he yeah. has ace-2 offsuit or something like that. Does he really want to jam this board? I think ace-2 offsuit should just be all in pre every time. I'm sure. More, I'm sure. more thinking about like 8-3 offsuit. Okay. Like yeah. If he has like 8-3 offsuit, He's just dead when called. Like, mm -hmm. literally no equity. So I think he definitely wants to have some portion of his range that just min bets. Like, if he has top set here, you know, he's, he's not going to, does not want to go all in. So I think, like, if I'm thinking about, like, a very, very polarized range in the spot. Because, remember, pre-flop, he's going to be jamming all the stuff in the middle, min, yeah, min raising lot. the best hand, or 2.5x the best hands, and some total garbage, yeah. right? So we are presuming he has total garbage or a, pre a premium hand, right? Yeah. So if that's the case... You should bet small, right? I think, I think minning is probably common here, but with his stuff that interacts with the board, like imagine if he just has like eight nine here. He just wants to be all in. Sure, I, I think because like he, he, I have to fold. Like if I called the flop with like I don't know a ten or something, I just have to fold. You know, I can't. I mean, maybe not a ten. Maybe I call a ten, but like a seven. Say I have the I don't know queen seven suit or something like that. I think I should probably fold pre. Um, but if I have a hand like that, I think I would just have to muck. Because you don't want to get it in roughly flipping yeah. on the bubble. It's a disaster to get it in roughly flipping on the bubble because when you lose, you bubble. And when you win, you're probably in the money, but you very often don't double your equity in the yeah, tournament. Yeah, it's right? not sick. So anyway, you check, he jams, you call. He has the jack eight offsuit. Probably hand he wants to shove pre-flop, right? I think so. I'm not, I'm not positive, but I, I would think so. So on this flop of king ten seven, do you think he should have men bet and then folded to a shove? If we have the jack eight for a gut shot, which actually has pretty good equity against everything, because quite often the jack or the eight are going to be good. Yeah, I think his all in's fine. Yeah, I mean, once he gets the flop, it's kind of, it's kind of fine. But but if he had, I mean, if he had an inclination that I'm just like trapping here always, then he then he wants to check back, right? Or like do do something different. It's not all in, but yeah, I think my range can be wide enough that jamming here is probably just the right play. It's kind of a hand like once nine eight, here. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you have a draw that lacks showdown value, but has Decent equity, you're probably just in. Yeah. So anyway, you trapped here. Did you bubble? No. Oh, that's, hot. that's lucky. <laughs> so that was good. One thing I wanted to address before we wrap up this video is what if there were no payout implications? What if we're nowhere near the, the money, there's no bubble, everyone folds to Negranu now, who raises to 2.5 big blinds. You have eight big blinds in the big blind. With the payout implications, you have to be pretty tight, right? But what do we do with no payout implications? Defend everything. <laughs> Almost everything, right? Like... When you're so shallow, you're going to realize all your almost all your equity. Which means position. you make a pair or you a draw, yeah. you don't fold, yeah. right? Sure. It's nice and easy. It's very different when you're deeper stacked, where if you make bottom pair, you're often going to fold it by the river, right? When you're shallow stacked, you're never folding it, right? Yeah. So you're essentially calling preflop, knowing that if you make any decent hand at all, you're putting your money in. Um, what a lot of people do wrong in this spot is they think, well, I have to be all in or fold before the flop, but that's... Not accurate, because if you don't have nearly as much fold equity than before the flop, because he put in two and a half, he has to call another five and a half. He's going to call basically everything there. And you don't want to get it in with like eight high, right? But if you have eight seven, you want to call the raise, flop a pair, and then go with it. Exactly. But you don't want to call off all your money, which is effectively what you're doing if you shove, with the eight high. Yeah. So And you have very little fold equity in chips, right? So, right. So it's not like it's not like you can just re-jam the spot and, and make him fold a better hand in, the, in, in here. Correct. And, 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 like, I think this is a spot that people mess up. When when you have 60 bigs in the spot, people are like, oh, I can defend so wide because I'm deeper stacked. Because I'm getting such good pot odds. But you also have to worry that about that you're playing the pot out of position. You have reverse implied odds. You're not going to realize all of the equity. And so at 60 bigs, you have to be tighter than as you get shallower and shallower. And then the shorter you get, especially sub-10 big blinds, you just have to defend everything because it doesn't matter if you're dominated more often. None of that stuff matters because... You're not facing multiple streets of aggression where you're going to have to fold the middle pair on the turn to a big bet. You're going to have to fold the top pair to a river bet. Not you, but, you know. Other, other <laughs> I don't fold the top pair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but so when you're shallow, you just have to defend 
su such a big, I mean, probably like 95% or something, something extremely, ex extremely wide range. Right, so as you're facing smaller ray sizes, as you often are when you're shallow stacked, you defend wider. As you are facing wider raises, you defend wider. And as your stack gets shallower, you defend wider. And you can see this if you look at the GTO preflop charts at pokercoaching.com. It's very clear if you just take some time and go through and check those out. So that's it. You got in the money? Got in the money. Wow. You're winning bracelets, getting in the money. Took fourth place in the circuit event the other day. Congrats on that. <laughs> Smashing them. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button below. Also click the notification bell. Good luck in your games. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you next time. Howdy, partners. Station Master Little here with a public service announcement. It's come to my attention that a few of you have become extreme calling stations. Now, I love calling. I'm the Station Master, after all. But you can't call with Queen High every time. Sometimes you have to fold. Click subscribe to make sure you don't become a super station.